the homework assignment dealt with placing uh, the, the components that Rivet provides. And as you can tell, they're not particularly exciting. I think of them as space holders for when I go out and get the actual product from a manufacturer. Most manufacturers' websites do uh, provide that kind of information. If you drill down deeply enough into somewhere at the bottom of the page, it'll say BIM drawings or CAD drawings or architects resources or something, and you can f find all that. Certainly all the furniture manufacturers have vast quantities of all their furniture available in, in Revit format. Uh, let's just all start with um, a simple little building Simple little room, really. Rivet's not starting for me yet for some reason. We've got three ways to, to create our own 3D components in Revit. The first is to use architecture component model in place to create one of a kind objects, which are created directly in the project, uh, aren't saved to disk, just whatever you happen to need right there. And if you'll consult your uh, lecture notes. And number two is we use the file new family command to create objects that we can reuse in other projects or send to somebody on the internet or whatever it happens to be. And then a, a third way is to find an existing model that's close. You might down, download from a furniture manufacturer, but you decide you wanna have a base on the sofa instead of legs. You can download the family, edit it, erase the legs, put in a base, save it with a new name and, and you're ready to go. And uh, whichever of those we use, we've got the same 3D tools to create solid objects. Okay, let's, let's just all get a new project so we can start start clean. And what we'll do is experiment with how to, how to use these tools using the various model in place options. If you get around to saving it, you know, call it 3D practice or something rather so you'll sort of have those pieces there. For reference, I'm just gonna draw some L-shaped walls uh, just so I have got some stuff for scale. The most basic of 3D tools is extrusion. Let's get into a, a 3D view here while ones are doing 3D things. And with that, you, you draw a, some sort of bounded shape. It can be rectangular, it can be a hexagon, it can be combinations of lines and circles, lines and arcs, uh, and then give it a height and it, and it becomes a solid object. So if we go into architecture, component, model in place, that means right here in this model, not on its own on disk. And with all these things, we need to tell them what kind of a thing is this. So if we're making, if we're making something that's like a piece of furniture, uh, Revit will know, okay, give it the line weight of all the furniture that we're using. If it's a wall, treat it like a wall. Let's just say it's furniture for right now. Don't know what this will be. And then we give it a name. We'll just say furniture one, that's fine. The walls have been grayed out to let me know I'm in a space where I'll be making a new thing, but I can see them to understand where, where it is I'm putting it. Extrusion. An extrusion can be any bounded shape head meets the tail. I'll just do this. Some odd shape here in plan, making sure that I've come back to the starting point. That magenta outline is called its boundary. All of the 3D tools use two-dimensional shapes and lines to create 3D objects. And if we say finish edit mode, then it will be there as a solid thing whose faces we can then adjust as, as needed. One more time from the beginning. So we're in architecture, component, model in place, furniture, okay, furniture one, and then extrusion across the top. Any shape you want, I'll use a rectangle this time. At this point, the default height for the extrusion will be one foot from the floor where we drew it. It'll extrude up a foot. If you want to just change that right now and you know it needs to be three feet, six and a half inches, you can just put that in up here. Uh, it's a little confusing. Uh, extrusion start is on the bottom, extrusion end is on the top. So you get that sense of, you know, what's the bottom and what's the top. Once you've got that defined, uh, then you say, okay. And, and there's the object. And let's just finish model at this point, finish model. So the nice thing about these is when, when you select them, even after you created them and are out of that editing mode, you can pick faces and make it as big as you want. 
And I think this will like, yeah, it's it, it can find when it hits uh, another planar surface, to, so you can tuck it right into the wall without having to like do any, any measuring and stuff, just highlights and goes. So that's a straight extrusion up from the current level. We can extrude things from other faces. If I want a cylinder projecting from this wall, I can go to architecture, component, model in place, same same deal. You know, I don't care what this is. The furniture again. And again, this will be an extrusion and a circle. But if I if I draw here, it's it's gonna actually gonna be drawing out on the floor. So we need to tell it, control Z, we need to tell it draw on this wall plane. So uh, work 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 plane is the idea. We, we want to be drawing on that face of that wall so we can then project out from the wall. And that's under work plane. We'll just pick set. And picking a plane is the easiest way to do that. Um, if you've got something existing there already. And you just sort of hover on the edge of that until it turns blue and you say, that's the one I want to draw on now. And then you can go draw on that on that face and say, OK, and then make it as long as you want. And that, too, remains editable in length at any rate. I can't change the diameter of it uh, just here in the model. If I want to go sort of back and do more fine tuning on it, uh, with all of these, you can select the object, go to edit in place, select it again. Uh, and now you see I have um, a couple of ways of changing this. I, oh, that's just to move it vertically, sorry. Um, edit in place. Uh, and then edit extrusion, and that takes you back to where the circle is, and you can change that underlying geometry uh, that way. So extrusions need a plane to start on and are initially locked to that plane. So if I now wanted to rotate that cylinder in plan, I can't do it yet. Rotate. I can't do that because this object is still locked or in Revit terms associated with the plane of that wall. And we'll see later on how an object can be dissociated from the plane it was created on and moved anywhere in the project. The next kind of extrusion is called a blend where you start with one shape, let's say a square, and end up with another one, let's say a circle. And that would be with architecture, component, model in place, audiovisual devices, I don't care. And a blend, then we're going to draw two, two shapes. One will be the bottom, and let's make that a rectangle. Let me get into a plan view here. One, I'll make this one a, a, a rectangle square. So that's the bottom. And then I say edit top in where I'm going to be drawing the circle. And I'll put this rect uh, right, circle. And I'll start out with it being sort of centered. And we'll say, OK. And now this two starts out being a foot high. If we know we want it higher, uh, we can do that, or I'll, I'll leave I'll leave this one at a foot for right now and say finish model. Now we have this interesting shape, which can be stretched as needed. We take this into a, a shaded mode. We see that as a shaded solid. It's easier for me to see these in plan to keep them lined up, but that's in architecture component, model in place, pick any of these for right now. And then 
right after extrusion is blend. And it's sort of, you know, very similar sort of thing to what we're doing right here. And you can use this to taper a single shape going up. Uh, if, if I draw a, a rectangle for the bottom like that, and then a top, just like that. So that you can have those in any relationship to each other. They can be going off to the side or, or just straight up centered on each other. Yeah, let's do WT here. Extrusion and blend both yield extrusions along a straight line. It's just it's going either truly straight up like the first one or at a sort of at an angle like that, but it's it's not a it's not a curved path. The next shape would be what's called a sweep, which is where you take a 2D shape, a profile, and move it along a path to create a more complex three-dimensional object. I think I'll do that in this in this 3D mode. This work starts getting a little more complicated because we have to deal with one sh shape that we're drawing flat on the ground and another shape we're drawing uh, in a vertical plane that's going to move along that, that line. So we start the same way. Architecture, component, model in place. OK. I'll say sweep. So we have two things to draw here. One is we're going we're gonna to draw the path that we want this thing to follow. And once that's done, we'll hit the green check mark, and then we'll be drawing the shape that we want to have extruded, uh, swept along that path. And then that gets a green check mark, and then there's another green check mark to sort of complete the whole object. But let's just sketch a path, and I'm just going to sketch a uh, to start with a curve. Just an arc. And what we can see here is here's my arc drawn down on the floor. Shift on the floor. And then we have this new plane, which is the vertical plane that we're gonna draw the actual object on that we wanna have, have doing that. So when I finish doing the arc, and I could be adding to this, but let's not. I'll say, okay, done with that part. And now we, now we draw the profile. Revit uses the terminology of anything that's horizontal. Its edges are called a boundary, like a like a floor or, or a roof. And a profile is the outline of anything vertical, like a wall or one of these things that we're drawing here. So then we'll say edit profile. And the easiest way to do this is just sort of rotate this around until you can see it almost in elevation view. And I'm going to pick a um, a rectangle and maybe fill it one of its corners. Just something simple like that. Could, could, it, this could be any shape, could still be the rectangle. And then we say, okay. I've, so I've said, okay to sketching the path. I said, okay to picking the, um, profile, and then I say OK to make the whole object. And then just keep checking green check marks till there aren't any left. <laughs> it might, might take a couple. So this could be you might what you might use for the rounded edge to go all the way around the tabletop. Just f follow that follow that perimeter. Once we've made this, you say, oh, that's uh, that's too much of an arc. I want it. I want it a flatter arc. We can select it. In either view, it doesn't matter. And say edit in place. Uh, and then because an object actually might have two parts to it, we need to go back again and select this object to say of this possibly multi-part component, this is the one that I want to actually work on. And then most of these will have sort of off to the, you know, these are our working tools, uh, edit sweep will be this right here. Uh, I edit, so edit, edit, the sweep is the whole thing. Sketching the path now takes me back to the 
you sort of have to drill drill down and then and then okay 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 back up but i can pick this and let's say change the change the radius uh change the radius from six foot six to eight feet i'm just trying to make this a shallow arc won't look that different so let's, let's add something to that we can pick a line so it's now longer it has a shallower arc i can say okay 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 so now i have have that shape instead the basic process of, of any of these is to be able to uh, create the object and then go back in and modify it as, as needed for whatever that particular thing needs to be. The next one, and I can't recall ever having used one in a real project, is a swept blend, where it's sort of like a blend where you start with one shape and end up with another. However, this time you're going along a path, changing from one shape to another shape. Um, let's just see, see, see if I remember how to do this. Uh, let's do um, architecture, component, model in place, whatever. I should, I should have named these. I should have named these like swept blend so we'd have that together. But here's a swept blend. And again, I do have an option of picking a, a three-dimensional path that's already existing. Like if I already had the table here, I could pick the edges of the table, but we'll just be drawing our own. So we'll sketch it. And again, this could be a path like this. Uh, I'll just do a sort of a one like that. We'll see what happens. So I've finished sketching the path. I say, okay. More than one curve not allowed. Okay, well that that uh, takes care of that. Well, we'll, we'll use that anyhow. And you see, on this one, I've got two shapes to draw. I've I've got I've got a starting shape and an ending shape. So we'll say, okay, I've finished drawing the path. Now I'm going to create these two profiles, these two vertical shapes. That'll be in edit profile, select profile one. I haven't done this for a while, edit profile. Okay, that's, here's number one. And I'm gonna start with a, a rectangle on this edge because it's, uh, it's easy. So I've gone down to, to doing profile number one. I want, I, now I'm sort of backing up a level to say I, now I want number two. And I'm gonna edit that. And I'll put um, an ellipse on there. Okay. And at this point, I've defined all three, three things I need, the path, profile one, profile two. I'll just keep hitting this until it's, uh, until it's done. And that doesn't seem that different from the blend because those are just straight along the line. But when I curve this, if I edit in place, this guy, edit, swept, blend, sketch path. If I change that from a, um, from a, a straight line to an arc and get rid of this, then these guys, crank because their ends are going to be chopped uh, perpendicular to the line right at that point. I think this will work. Okay. 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 So we get a shape that starts out, oops, starts out square and small and goes on a curve to end up in a big ellipse. I don't know how that kind of thing would be machined. I can make it on a 3D printer, but I, I don't know how you do it in, re, in real in real life. When I, I, I used to work at Actors Theater year, years and years ago as a stage carpenter, and the designer there, Paul Owen, 
he knew pretty much how to build everything, but it wasn't his job to figure out how to make things. He would design them the way he wanted them to look, and then the technical director would figure out how to, how to build them. And that's, we're sort of having to do both in this process for ourselves. We need to conceive of what it is and then, and then be the ones who actually figure out the pieces that make it go together. And the idea behind a revolve, let's just say we're doing a wine glass. We draft exactly half of a wine glass and then tell it to revolve itself around an axis of revolution and we get the three-dimensional wine glass. To do this, uh, I'm gonna get into uh, my front view here so that my revolved object will be in the correct vertical orientation to start with. We'll do something simpler than a wine glass. We'll make a, an odd shape. Again, I gotta go into architecture, component, model in place. Okay, revolve. The first thing I need to do here is to, since we're not drawing on the floor, I wanna draw this profile on a vertical plane. So I'm gonna tell Revit, I wanna set my work plane. I'm gonna draw it right here on the side of this. I'm gonna pick a plane and say that, that's the face that I wanna draw on. And now I tell it, I wanna draw a revolve. And all of these uh, either boundaries, sketch lines or profiles, they all are that bright magenta color. So you know, that's the only reason that's used in, in Revit is for these two dimensional shapes, they will become three dimensional shapes. So let's just do uh, something simple. Forget the, forget the curves. So I'm gonna pick that shape and spin it around uh, this, this line right here. And we'll get sort of a cylinder with a hole in the middle that stops down at the bottom. I'm gonna move that over a little bit. So I've drawn the profile. Uh, all the lines touch at the edges, I say, okay. Oh, uh, the axis of revolution is not yet specified. So I'll say continue. So I did the boundary line. Now I do the axis line. And I say that's there. And now I can create that three-dimensional shape, which looks like like this. And it's halfway into that thing because it's um that's where we drew it. So I'll just drag it out. Oh, I, actually, that was dragging it down. And the reason I could drag it down, but not out and away from the box, was that the cylinder is still associated with that work plane that it was drawn on. Uh, this object has been drawn on this plane. So that's where it's gonna stay until we release it from that plane. And you do that by selecting it, going to edit in place, selecting it again, and see this little guy? It, it doesn't zoom in. It's a little thing like this that sort of indicates a, a plane and then there's a lock on it, which means that right now this guy is locked to this plane. I, I can't, it, it's gonna just keep moving around on that surface. But if I go into edit, edit it, click that to dissociate this object from the work plane. Okay, cancel. Uh, now I can move that out uh, in, in three-dimensional space. Dissociate work plane uh, is a fairly critical step uh, to this, unless you, for some reason, you want something always to stay where it was made, which might or might not be the case. If I wanted to put a hole in the bottom of this, just a round hole in the middle of, the, of this, like it's a planter and we're gonna let water out, I can pick it, edit in place, select it, edit revolve, And if I, if, I, if I keep rotating around this line, but move this edge in, let's drag that down. You can see that right here, there will be an empty space, emptiness will be, end up being a, this line will end up getting projected around in a circle. Okay, finish model. 
So there that is with a, with a hole in the bottom. So a bunch of different ways to drill holes. That's what you use for revolves. With an extrusion, and when we just extrude it, it, it's all solid, solid stuff from top to bottom. If we edit its boundary and draw a shape inside its boundary, that becomes a hole all the way through the extrusion. And if we draw a shape inside the second shape, that becomes a solid and so on. So again, that's just a matter of selecting the object, edit in place, select this one again, because it might've been part of a larger two-part thing, edit the extrusion. So here I'm making a hole. And here I'm making a pentagon. Okay. So now we have that all as one, one object. And finish model. Anytime you, if you draw a floor and need to have room for a stair to come through, you just draw a rectangle, edit, edit the boundary, purple line, draw a purple rectangle, enter, 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 and that's the hole for the stair to come through. If you want to put a round hole in this wall, we'll do this later on. You pick the wall, edit the profile, draw the circle, click, 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 and you've got a round hole in the, in the wall. A couple other three things we need to know about, as long as we're in this, is th uh, 3D lines. They're called model lines. And that's, in, that's a slightly different place to go, architecture model line. And if I draw it, I think I'm drawing it from here to here on that on that face, but no, I'm really drawing it on level one. I need to um, do control Z. I need to again tell Revit to use this face as the, as where I want to draw. It's like just putting your piece of paper paper there. So pretty much any time architecture is selected, you've got the set work plane possibility. Pick a plane. I want to be on, on that plane right there. And then I can go to model line. Whatever you want it to be. There's nothing to complete here. You don't have to hit the green check mark. You just hit escape to get out. And now that's that's there. Some of the furniture you get online will be highly modeled um, from the manufacturer. You know, if you've downloaded a a high-end range or something, rather it's got all the knobs, it's got all the tools, it's got everything. Um, it might be that at a lower end, or if you just want to rough something in, if, if this were your stove, um, you know, just a, a block that you made to represent a stove, you could just sort of draw in the oven door there to clue people in what was, what was happening. And if you don't want these to be green, you can select them one at a time or window them, or even better, Hover over one, hit tab. They're all identical things of the same type. So it'll pick all the ones that connect end to end, click again. And then you can change this from the default line styles to just medium, medium lines or medium black lines, whatever those are. So they'll they'll start out being, well, let's see, model line. Oh, even right in model line, you could I could have picked uh, a line style to work with there. The last 3D thing you want to look at is 3D text, architecture model text. And we'll just right now leave that. This is what it's going to say. Um, hi there. And then we can pl uh, place that uh, giving, oh, I don't know what, what uh, I don't know what I don't know what work plane. Oh, that's getting that's getting. This is still the active work plane. So let's let's uh let's delete that and go back to set set work plane. Um, just back to level one, but back to back to the floor for right now. But we can we can pick anything that's that's a plane. Okay, so we'll go to. See, we have to start really thinking in three D now, like. Um, some things come up from the floor. Some things come down from the ceiling. Some things come off from, you know, <laughs> who knows where. 
Okay, so I'm on the floor. Model text. Uh, this is on the floor. Okay. So there's there's that wowie zowie stuff. So this guy has height, which is just like any any of our fonts. I mean, normally we're dealing with fonts this big in Revit, you know, just to be on the sheet. But if this is like signage on a building, um, so their default there is uh, is 24 inches high, uh, here to here, 24 inches, and it's six inches deep. So if we want that deeper, just pick this object, make it a foot deep. There are some third-party applications that will put this like on an arc on the, on the face of a building. If we want to do that, we have to do like letter by letter and, and then arrange them um, that way. It's, it's not that big a deal once you get it done. As with any text type in Revit, we can edit type, duplicate. Let's call this 12 inch. That's this way, 12 inch, 12 inch uh, times. Roman. Well, so we've named it. Now we'll actually make it that way. QRST. Well, to 12, be careful, 12 inches. Okay. So we've changed the, changed the font, changed the height. Um, and, and there's the depth. We can take that down to two inches if we want. As you can see, depth is a property of each instance, not of the whole type. So putting that on a wall over a reception desk or something is simply a matter, as we saw earlier, of setting this the active face and, um, and putting this on it. And so, uh, I, I could just create a new one, but I think Right now, this is hosted by the level. I think I can say host this by the wall. Edit text. Pick new work plane. There we go. Pick new work plane. See, that's attaching to a new thing up there. Pick new. Let's pick that face. And there it goes. So you can make it on the, I guess we need to rotate it. Your brain has to start working hard in 3D. There. So there's that. So extrusions, same shape coming up, blends, change shape going up, sweeps, one shape moves around, sweep blend, one shape moves around and changes shape, revolve, oh, void forms. Uh, actually what got me started on this whole thing was Julianne wanted to put a fireplace in the corner of her living room, um, which we, oh, I'll just get rid of this and show you a couple ways to do that. So that that big chimney mass, we just went went straight up and I used architecture, component, model in place. And we figured that that's the closest thing that is to a wall, we'll just say, okay, call it fireplace just to keep it straight later on. And then I'm doing an extrusion. It's, I'm just sort of roughly coming out, coming out here, it doesn't matter. So we'll say there's that, and we'll drag it right up to the ceiling. Uh, so there's that, but that's the chimney, but we need the hole in there which is gonna be a, a void form. And I could draw that void on the ground, but I don't know that angle, you know, 63 degrees, something like that. So what I wanna do is, is draw a void form right on that face and then have it go in and subtract itself from the, the chimney mass. So we'll say, okay, there. So actually what I wanna do is come back here. So here, here's an instance where we're gonna have an object that's made out of 
a, a final component that's made out of two different objects. There'll be a, a solid, which is here, and then a void, which is subtracted from it. So I, I, I'm really going to edit this object. I want them to move around together. So I'm going to select that, edit in place, and I'm going to create, instead of a, an extrusion, I'm going to create a void extrusion on this face. So I'll pick set work plane, pick a plane, okay, here, and then draw a rectangle there that's going to punch into that guy. Now let's, let's make it a little fancier. So here's my the shape of my void. Um, I'll make that two feet deep. I'm not sure if it's going to go in or out at this point, but we'll see. I make it two feet deep and say, OK, the finished model. And, and there that is, cut in. So this is now one object that has two components to it, a solid and a, and a void. If we'd wanted, let's say that the fireplace itself only comes up this high and that there's a chimney thing back in there, just the chimney, we could select this, edit in place, create another extrusion, uh, set work plane here, where I'm going to draw this thing. That looks good to me. Okay, and then drag that up to there and finish model. So, so there's that as one, one editable object. Why are we doing this? We're doing this because what comes out of the box isn't necessarily what you intend to have in the spaces that you're designing. That's part of the great fun of this is that we don't just have to deal with stock, stock items. So I've got a couple of exercises here. And one would be just to edit the profile of a wall, to give a wall a curved top, for instance. Let's say this is a, a divider wall in your, uh, in your restaurant, and you want to have a wavy sculptural top to it. So it's a, it's a seafood restaurant. I don't know. <clears throat> but uh, we can select this. And this is just a wall. This isn't like some special crazy custom object. This is just a wall, and it's got a, it has a vertical profile. We want to edit that profile. Turns, turns maroon mean you know it's magenta. Turning meaning, you know, edit me. So I'm going to just, uh, draw a couple of curves up here. This is the continue curve tool. I'll use that again. Let's do that. I need to get rid of this guy because what I want in a profile is a continuous bounded profile tree with no extra stuff in it. So I see that and then, okay. And then, then there's our, our interior partition uh, doing whatever it needs to do. And again, if we, if we want to edit this profile and just draw some circles in it to have, you know, we're in a daycare facility and the kids want to peek through at each other or crawl through. We do that. You know, maybe, maybe the next assignment should be do everything you can possibly think of to a wall. I don't know. <laughs> Let me show you a couple more things you can do with a wall. And this is nice, especially since like we're interior designers and don't have to pay that much attention to the structure of things. Any wall of any type can be given either a vertical or a slanted or a tapered cross section. So let's just look at slanted, that's a little obvious. And then a degrees, 15 degrees. 
There's that. I've never done a slanted wall. I need better clients. Uh, you might ask, a slanted wall, let's pretend it's an exterior wall. What about doors and windows? How does that work? Well, let's try that. Architecture door, we'll just take whatever's there. Well, that's a little tricky. Let's try a window. Oh, that's, that's a little tricky too. Let me go back into a easier C mode. But what's nice is, if this just has to happen, we can pick the window. If it's been placed in a slanted wall, we have a new uh, option here, whether to have it be vertical the way it is now, or to, to slant to match the, the slant. Uh, windows by and large can do that. Um, you know, whatever, it makes opening them a little more difficult. Uh, do doors, you can do this too, but then the, the door is gonna slide down and bang on something. So it actually will never open unless you open it up this way, which will be heavy and it'll, you know, so you're right, that really never happens. Let's let's look at a tapered wall just just for just for fun. Let's start a new wall and just see what we get. Let's look at, let's look at one that's tapered. This wall's wall type is not compatible with the tapered cross section. Set a layer in the wall type to have variable thickness. Okay. So I forgot about that. So it says we need to do something to the wall's construction to give it at least one layer that can taper instead of being a uniform thickness like plywood. So let's go to edit type and go to structure and structure by category, make it variable. So it can be as wide as we want at the bottom, tapering to eight inches wide at the top. And its nominal thickness will be still eight inches. So we'll say, okay, okay. And then I'll pick my, this wall and say, we're gonna make this tapered. And then I've got these extra enable angle overrides. Okay, so there's, let's look at something first. So th this side, the side that's toward everything else is the outside. Let's flip that around. So that's the outside and this is the inside because that's what we're gonna have to deal with. and enable those. So this will let us change these angles. Let's, let's just make them both be 10 degrees. I'm just guessing at this right now, I confess. And I think they'll just go up to be, yeah, so they end up being eight inches and they start out wider at the bottom. What do you think a door is gonna do in here? Let's find out, DR for door. I don't know, there, there, there's a door right there. A door, why is it so far high up in the... Oh, it's on level two. Let me take it down to level one. So it looks as though it put it in the middle of the wall, but vertical. Yeah, so that, that's in the, in, placed in the middle and, and vertical, which makes sense for a door. Like this is a castle or, I don't know, you're the designers. Uh, a window, I don't know, WN for window. Same thing, vertical in the middle. Let's see if I can change it to, look at this, slant along exterior, slant along interior. Oh, and so it's slanted parallel to that outside face or to the inside face. Okay, well, so uh, some, some of these are, are new in the 2023 version of this. I, I don't recall seeing all the school stuff. So, so that's a fun little playground to start working with. Let's actually do these exercises at, at the bottom of, of page one, just so you'll have the full experience and we'll get to as much as we can on page two, but I expect to continue with that probably on, on Wednesday. So I'm gonna sit back and I would like you to create a wall, edit its profile at top and bottom. Let's make a wall that looks like, like that and has a hole in it here and a hole in it here.
Okay, you have three minutes to do this. That's one wall and I want you to use only the wall edit profile. So what's the first step? So you can do this in a plan view or an elevation view or a 3D view. And something else I, I guess I have to say is if, you, if you're depending on me for everything you know about Revit, you're really selling yourself short in terms of books and YouTube and all the stuff on the AutoCAD website. I mean, I do put this stuff together for a binder for you, but it's by no means everything that you will need to know about Revit. Now that most of you have had a shot at this, let me review some of the editing tools you'll need to do this. How do these arcs happen? How do you make that work? Start by selecting the wall in a place where I can see this plane of it, not a, not a plan view. Go to edit profile. That's the purple magenta line. And then to get the bump on the top, I'm going to my, this is the easiest arc tool to use. Click once, click again, then drag up where you want it. And then to trim out this part, I'm gonna first break this line in, in the middle, my little X-Acto knife. So now I have two pieces and I can use the trim tool to trim those two together and these two together. And then the same basic process at the bottom. Okay, another uh, another little exercise. Want to design a custom granite countertop that in section will look like this. It's two inches thick, 25 inches deep up against the wall, six inches high. This part's two inches, this part's one inches, and it's got some radiuses on it. I suggest we start by doing a squared off version first with just the straight lines and then come do the fillets afterwards. Draw yourself two walls, maybe eight feet by 10 feet like that. And we're gonna put, make this countertop turn the corner. So what this is gonna be, any shape that does more than just project in one direction, which could be an extrusion, anything that like bends or curves and becomes what one piece needs to be a sweep. Let me straighten this uh, out. Going to architecture, component, model in place, casework. Casework applies to countertops as well as the wall cabinets. I'm gonna create a sweep. And I'm gonna sketch the path from, from here to here to here. And we can come back and edit the path uh, afterwards if we, if we need to make it shorter. So I'm done drawing the path, I hit the green arrow. Now I could go into select profile and pick a profile that might've been already, already stored. It's, it's a Revit family as well. I'm gonna go to edit profile so I can just draw it with lines. I'm gonna start here, sort of do that longest distance I know first, the two feet one. And now I'm coming up now, I'm, I'm, I'm drawing in a vertical plane, come up two inches. I'm going back 20, 24 inches. Up four, over one, back down six and close. So with that done, I've got my path, I've got my profile. I pretty much just keep hitting this until I'm finished. At this point, it's on the floor because that's where I drew its path. Let's see if I could just move it up right here. I'll do move. That's not gonna work, is it? Uh, let me try to remember this, this is important. The counter is still associated with the plane that the lines were drawn in. So edit in place. Again, it's drawn on the floor. 
I need to tell it, you need to dissociate yourself from that work plane. I made it on the floor, I need to free it so it can be anywhere in space. And then you click that to dissociate the counter from the work plane, which turns it off. And then finish model. Let's get into a elevation view and make sure that's uh, being done right. Might be my south elevation. Yeah. Move. Actually, I want to come up. Uh, if I want a 36 inch counter and that's two inches deep, I want to come up 34 inches. There we go. So if you if remember, you know, Revit means revise it. So we're going to do to get the curves in here, the fillets is come back in and edit the profile and put the appropriate radii on there. In AutoCAD, I could just, I can, if I made a 3D solid, I can just go in there and, and do pick the fillet command and hit that edge and it would round it right off. Uh, Revit's different. For this, we need to go in and edit this object. I need to edit the sweep. I need to sketch the, uh, sorry, edit the profile. Edit the profile to turn it magenta and then put the fillets on with this fillet arc tool. So I got a couple of different ones to do. I'll use the radius of one half inch up here at the top. That's here, a raise of two inches down here. Change this to two inches. There to there. And then do a radius of one inch here. So that's the new shape, thing of beauty. Keep hitting green arrows until it uh, until it's done, and then if we see that in a shaded mode or realistic, we'll get the full flavor of the curves. So uh, this last arc tool over here is the fillet arc. And on the options bar is where you say, yeah, I want to radius it. And I want to put in a half inch radius or whatever it happens to be. And then you pick the two lines that you want to radius. And then you're still in the radius arc tool. So we can just come in and set this one to two inches and do those guys. And then that gets you out of there, that gets you out of there, that gets you out of the whole thing. Well, that was a bunch of steps. I mean, eventually you'll you'll sort of internalize them, but um, editing sweeps, I, I gotta pay attention to what's available, you know. Okay, last exercise. Pick a wall, any wall, set your work plane to the face of the wall, draw like a rectangular plaque, 36 by 24 is a nice size, and let's say an inch, an inch deep. And then we're gonna put model text on there, a couple of lines of text, four inches high, times Roman, center justified, two inches deep. So the only trick with this is you've got one work plane for the plaque, which is the wall, and another work plane for the text, which is the plaque, the front face of the plaque. So it's not sitting into it, but it's uh, projecting entirely from it. And it doesn't matter what uh, what kind of thing you call it, what category it's in. I would think it's an extrusion just based right on that on that wall. Good, it's a good start. Model text.
There we go. I think we'll save page two for, for Wednesday. My brain is full. So any of this be useful in Schneider Hall? Do some wild and crazy stuff? So, so save this file. You might need it another day. I mean, that, that's, that's a pretty good day's work.